Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be setting up the parameters within the program for our fiber laser and then once we've done all of our programs and parameter settings we're going to go ahead and test this new machine and see what it's capable of. So the first thing we need to do is open up our program, switch our machine on and then we can get started. So I'm going to turn it on over here and now I've already got my two buttons on at the bottom that are already on, which is our system switch and our laser switch. These both have to be on in order to do anything. Now that our machine is on and I've made sure everything is connected correctly, and just one more thing, you gotta make sure that your fiber optic cable is not being crunched or pinched at the back, otherwise you can damage it quite easily. So try and make sure there's extra space and it's allowed to stay flat. So now all we're going to do is double click and open up our program. We've got a lovely new graphic on the front and here we are, here's our program here. Now in order to actually do anything and use your machine you have to make sure that this is on otherwise it does not pick it up in the program and it'll end up saying something along the lines of there at the top where it's in demo mode. So you want to make sure that you're connected and this is on before you open your program. Now, we're going to first go over our default settings on the right hand side of our screen over here. I've already changed these, but I'm gonna show you what they are and what you should be changing them to. And then we're gonna go over to our configuration and change everything in there and line up this new laser so that we can actually do some engraving. So first thing is, over here, this normally is unticked and it's normally got number one present and this normally is a thousand. Now, the speed, it really is up to you how you want to set it and how fast you want it to go. Keep in mind that the faster it is, the less likely you are to penetrate the metal. The slower it is, the more time it's got to actually engrave into your metal. So I changed this to 350, that's my preferred speed. The default power is normally 75, but I'm going with 70, that can obviously change. You can start from all the way from 20 all the way to 80% and you'll be able to engrave. Next is, this is normally the frequency is at 30 but I've changed it to 20 because I want it to be able to impact more on the metal and changing your frequency will give you different types of engraving and depth. From there, we're going to leave the rest of these settings as these are not too much of a problem. From there, we can go and say set default parameters and then we can say apply because we want it to always remember my settings for the next time we open the program. Now, having a look at the program itself compared to the old one, this has got a new facelift. There's a few new options around that you can definitely see at the top and there's a few new options around on the side, but we're gonna start off with configuring these first. So what you need to do is go all the way to the bottom of your screen where it says config F3. Now you could push F3 as a shortcut, but we're just gonna go straight and click onto it. And then we're gonna literally go from one panel to the next and slowly convert all of these to be the correct parameters. Now I've gone ahead and I've printed my parameters, but you can go ahead and download this from AM's website, cn.co.za. And this will have all the parameters that you need for the latest model. And then you just need to go page by page until you're finished doing the parameter settings. So I'm gonna start on page one and we're gonna go ahead and look at our field parameters first. And we'll go to the top and we're going to just have a look at what we've got and see if we can change anything to be what it needs to be. Okay, so first of all, we must have a look here and we'll see that our exterior and aspects are a bit different to what it says on the page, but that's not too much of a problem. They do have similar settings. So our area size here is 220 now you've got to keep in mind depending on which lens you get depends on your area size so here this is says 100 but we have got a lens that says 220 so we're going to leave it at 220. then we're going to leave our offsets alone and our max line will leave at two from there we're going to go and have a look at our 
Galvo settings, which is our X and Y over here, Galvo 1 and Galvo 2, according to the page. And these we're going to leave at scale 100 each. 100. 100. Now, keep in mind that you might need to change this again once we go to our test phase because your laser might be a little bit different or out compared to the one that I'm using. But for a reference sakes, we're going to make sure that all of these are on 1.0. So now that you've put your default parameters in there, my recommendation is that you don't touch anything else until you've done a test. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to go ahead and we're going to push OK. Now, I want a square and I need to make sure that it's 100 by 100 for my accurate test. Make sure you untick the lock there so that you can change this in proportionately. And let's rather do 10 by 10 just to make sure that we can get a good size in. Okay, I'm going to have that put in the middle. Then we're going to need to hatch ours. Now, you're going to have a look at this panel and make sure that it's the same settings as this one. You're going to make sure it's enabled, outline, outline first. You're going to go with filling number one, enable. You're going to go with object overlay. Now, there's a few options you can pick here, but this is my favorite one. Um, and then from there, this is normally set to 1. You're going to change that to 0.01. And what that means is the distance between each engraving, each line. So if you change that to 1 exactly, you'll see that it'll be 1 mil between each line engraving. So you'll have an open-ended engraving. Now, I'll do one test as a sample just to show you what that looks like. But for now, change that to 0.01. How many are we wanting it to hatch? We only want it to hatch once, and then we're gonna tick evenly distributed and then leave all of these other settings as is, and we're gonna push okay. So now you can see that it is no longer just an outline of a square, it's a solid black square, and I'm going to make sure that we just click it, this option over here, make sure that it's in the middle. As you can see, I'll push it again. Awesome. So now what we need to do is get a piece of material and make sure that our lens is focused just to do this test so we can measure to see whether or not our square is correct. And from there, we'll go ahead and change those parameters like I mentioned. So we go ahead and we're gonna push red. So I'm gonna move that over there and I'm going to go ahead on my program, I'm going to switch my red off I'm going to make sure that it says continuous mark is selected on the program and then I'm going to push mark and then slowly adjust the laser height until it looks like it's engraving just so we can see if our square is correct. Okay so as you can see our laser is engraving. Now once it's done for a second time I'll stop it and then we'll go ahead and measure to see whether or not it's a perfect square. Um, one thing I have noticed is my laser is not aligned. So now we do need to address that, which we will, and make sure that our laser here is in the right place according to where it's actually engraving. So I'm gonna go ahead and push stop and then we'll start measuring. As you can see, I wanted a 10 mil square and we have got a lot bigger than 10 mil. This is in the lines of what's it, 10, 11, uh, 11 and a half millimeters on the one side. Let's go ahead and measure vertically to see if that's also correct. Also 11 and a half, so that needs to change. And for me, this looks like the square is square and it's not oblong or off to the side or curved in any way. If we go ahead and we just use a ruler and we lay it down next to it, we can see whether or not it is straight. Now you have to remember that if you are not focused correctly, it also will be out in size. So I'm gonna take this as an overall estimate that it does need to come down about one and a half mils in size. Um, 
Now I'm going to do a series of tests just to make sure that the focus is in the correct place. But for now I'm going to change that and also we're going to change the LED laser to move over to exactly where it's supposed to be engraving. So now we're going to go back to config and now we need to change our proportion. Now this, as we know, was a little bit bigger, so we need to proportionately change the size downward by at least one and a half mil. So I'm not so sure exactly what that measurement would be, so I'm going to just make this 99% proportional size. And then we're gonna push OK, and we're gonna go back and engrave again. Okay, so now that's engraved once, we'll stop that. And we can go ahead and measure again. Okay, so we can see it made a very, very subtle, small change in size. I'm gonna have to change it down. Oh, would you look at that? That is absolutely spot on on that side. And spot on on that side. So my final results that we came to were 85% proportion for both sides and that came down to the exact measurement that I needed. So now that I've done that and I've gone ahead and I've changed those parameters, I'm now happy that it's engraving a square that is actually square. We can now go over to our next panel and that is laser control. From here, we want to go ahead and just make sure that these are correct. So we want to make sure it's ticked on fiber. We want to make sure that it's at 200 for max and minimum set to 20. Now, I don't recommend you changing these settings purely because this setting is the actual power of the unit. So don't try and change those. Otherwise, you might cause some issues for yourself in the future in terms of power consumption, or you could possibly burn something out. So you don't want to do that. Now that we've gone and changed that, we also just need to make sure that our types of fiber is RPG-YLP. You do not want to change it to anything else. This needs to stay exactly how it is. From there, we can go ahead to our next screen and push port. Now, this is a very interesting panel because we have checked that we are happy with the way that it's engraving. Um, now, if you do want to change and you want to understand what this menu is, inside our booklet that, is, that you can download gives you a whole explanation on what this actually means now, unless you have a problem and you want to dive deeper in to this actual settings and change it to have a better form of engraving, all of this is explained in the downloadable file from that website. So if you want to know more, read up on it and go and fiddle and see what you can do with it. But I'm not going to change anything here because I am happy with the way that it is currently. From there, we can go over to other. Now, this is basically just its start and delay. Um, you don't want to change those unless you really want to. There's an explanation again inside this pamphlet, uh, the PDF document that explains this menu, but we're not going to change any settings here. They need to stay exactly how they are for myself. Then we're going to go ahead and have a look at our laser light. Now that's that red light that shows us exactly where it's going to engrave. Now as we noticed on the video when it's engraving we saw that the red line is not exactly where the engraving is. Now that's something we need to change. So this is something I haven't touched nor have I experimented with but what we want to do is first have a look at which way it was wrong. So for me, it was definitely off on its X axis, not its Y. So in order to change this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and that square engraving again, we're going to mark where it is and see how far it may need to move over. So we'll leave this as it is, except I would like to change the offset on the X, just so I can see which way it might move. So I'm gonna move this over by 0.05 and we're going to push preview and see where it 
lies. Now we're gonna leave this exactly where it is. We're going to engrave so that it leaves us a position to work off of. So as you can see, it is off to the side and it's also a little bit too high up. So we definitely change that. Once it's engraved, we'll go ahead and push the preview in that control panel just to make sure and how and where it changes to which direction. Okay, so now that we've got an area which we can actually see where it's been engraved, we're going to go back to the control panel, we're going to go back to red, and now we're going to change this setting. Let's go ahead and let's push it to, let's try 1 instead of just 0 0.5, let's try 1. And here I'm going to take that away and leave it as a positive, and we're going to preview it. Now this needs to come down and this needs to go to the right hand side so if we stop that preview we go ahead and I'm also going to select this as one for Y axis or let's go actually minus one point zero 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 four zeros and here I'm going to change this to three point four zeros and we go preview it still needs to go a little bit more and I feel like it should go back up again. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there you have it. That looks like it's aligned correctly. And my final settings for my laser was red light 3000 millimeters per second. Offset X will be 3.4 positive. Offset Y will be 0 0.39 negative. And then this ratio, I'm gonna leave exactly how it is. And as you can see, that's for the graphic outline. Um, and we wanna leave the rest of it. So now that we've finished putting those data fields in and I'm happy with where that red laser is, we're gonna go back to area control panel and we now need to say save config as so that once you've saved this it's now it's going to stay the same and you won't lose that configuration file uh, unless you delete it on your computer and that's going to help you for whenever you open your program you don't have to redo all these settings over and over again and now that that's done we're going to go push ok and there you go guys that's how i went and gone and done my configuration of my config settings all the parameters, how I adjusted my laser, figured out the height of which it needs to be engraved, and we also played around with our settings and did some tests. Now, if you wanna know more, like I said, you can go ahead and download that PDF document, read over it, understand what those settings mean, and you'll be engraving with really, really good detail. This machine has fantastic ways to engrave as I showed you, so play around and see what you come up with.